What is the government hiding about the fires that destroy the city of Lahaina on Maui, Hawaii? Well, newly released documents show a lot of names and a lot of names that have been redacted. Those individuals that tried to respond to the fires, uh, who tried to sign into Maui's Emergency Operations Center, and those names have been withheld from the public. Why is that? What is the government hiding about these fires? Nick Sorter is an independent journalist. He's in uh, Lahaina uh, at this hour uh, in the dark of night right now, and he joins us. Uh, you received these documents, Nick. What do you think the government is hiding, and what do these documents show us? So, so basically the documents are, it's, it's a sign-in sheet for the emergency operations center on the day of the fire, the day that Lahaina was incinerated. Uh, however, this took months and months and months for them to release this heavily redacted sign-in sheet. And, you know, all it does is it brings more questions and answers at this point because, you know, we don't know who was making the calls. Who were the ones that, you know, who made the call to block the roads? Uh, who, who was commanding the Coast Guard that day? And it, it, it took them hours to start rescuing people in the water out here. Who made that call? We don't know, we don't know who any of those people are. And, and most of these people work for the Hawaiian government as well with various different organizations. There's no reason these names should be redacted. And, but the censorship of information out here on Maui is it, it, it's unbelievable. All it does, everything that the government out here ends up doing just makes people trust them even less. And, you know, of course it's going to look like they're hiding a bunch of stuff based on making redactions like that on a sign-in sheet. That's really sketchy. We've also heard from first responders who said they were turned away when they arrived and firefighters who were there on scene and who were turned away, told to leave the scene and to get out. Again, have you heard that from first responders, firefighters, and individuals that you've spoken with there on Lahaina? Yeah, and, and, and I have heard that. But in addition to that, the, the firefighters that were on the scene didn't even have water. They're trying to fight a fire without water. And, you know, that's a whole mystery in and of itself. They didn't, they didn't have the resources. They didn't, I mean, it was such a, such a, a cluster. And to think that all of this stuff went wrong you know, how many coincidences can there possibly be? Right. I mean, let's go through some of these coincidences, right? Mobile phone service was turned off uh, many hours before the fire, right? Why, why was mobile phone service turned yeah. off before the fire? Um, we had electricity, reports of electricity turned off before the fire. Uh, tourists were allowed to be evacuated, but locals were held back. Why were locals not evacuated in all of this? The government... Um, of the governor made a proclamation just a few days before the fire, um, which gave the state, I would say, like dictatorial rights um, and allowed the governor to do to to have, you know, control over this zone in the event of a natural disaster, which is really which is really eye opening. Why would they do this a few days beforehand, Nick? That's the the million dollar question out here at, at this point. And that's a, a question that they haven't bothered answering. Now, the keep in mind, Hawaii is the most corrupt state in the union. Uh, and it's really not close. So they've never been held accountable. They know that they can get away with a lot of different things, uh, especially, you know, they feel like they don't owe the people any sort of answers. So no matter what the issue is, they, they don't care. And when the media goes away, and thank God you're covering this now, uh, when the media goes away, they're, they, they start relaxing even more. I mean, there's nobody to press them. And whistleblowers and such out here are terrified of retribution. It's very hard to find any sort of whistleblower out here uh, because the government is so corrupt. You point out in these documents, if we go back to the redacted documents, you, you, of course, you say that Maui County has refused to say who was in charge that day. I mean, if the governor had dictatorial rights that do we know, was it Maui County? Well, I mean, was it the state? Was it the federal government? We don't know, right? No, we have no idea. And that seems like a pretty easy question to answer. Uh, but for whatever reason, they, they don't want to. I, I don't know if it was 
you know, I, I just I, I want to know the main shot caller here. Was it the mayor? Is he trying to cover it up for political reasons? It's very likely. Uh, the, the chief of police has been hiding for months and months now. Nobody has heard from him. He hasn't taken any questions. He hasn't uh, done any interviews. He won't talk to the people. I haven't found a single person that has seen him here since uh, like October. Wow. So was he the one that made the call to block the roads and keep all the residents in? You know, Clayton, the only people that survived in Lahaina uh, are the ones that went around the roadblock. You know, illegally went around the, the Maui PD's roadblock. So we don't have any answers about that either. Why were they blocking the roads? And people are wondering if the chief of police has resigned. I mean, uh, literally a top query right now is whether or not uh, the, the chief of police on Maui has actually resigned because no one's heard. No, no one's heard of him. Uh, and of course, a lot of people drawing comparisons to the investigation in Las Vegas, um, that the, the same people overseeing the investigation of the mass shooting in Las Vegas is being uh, is is now in charge of this. And we still have incredible amounts of questions without answers in Las Vegas. Um, and the same here. No. Yeah, I mean, it seems like the guy is just really good at covering up, uh, covering up situations like this, because there were so many so many things that kind of allude to a, a cover up in Las Vegas. And then you come out here and it's the same scenario. And why they brought this guy out here to lead Maui police is anybody's guess because his main resume piece was leading the, uh, the, uh, the response to the Las Vegas shooting, which was a total disaster, obviously. And uh, they actually had to change a law out here because you were supposed to have been, in order to be a, a, a police chief, you were supposed to have lived on the island for at least four years. They changed the law to bring him in and let him do that. They passed up a bunch of veterans in the force to bring this guy in. So that's another question. He does. He is still in the position. I know that. But you wouldn't know that based on being on the ground. Right. I mean, all you need to do is go to Google search histories and you can actually see in Google Trends people searching for did he resign because no one's seen him so you have people searching for this and they can't find him which is fascinating um you you spoke to experts who said you know this is a huge red flag these redacted documents you have uh, 38 people that signed in that day 24 never signed out including the mayor what are these experts telling you about this procedure like why is this highly irregular I mean, they're, they're, it's totally against protocol uh, for for that to be happening. But, but basically, what they're what these experts are thinking at this point is these documents that they release are are incomplete, as in they didn't uh, they didn't release the 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 newest versions of them for whatever reason. They, uh, you know, if you look back at other sign in sheets, you know, that Maui County has produced in the past, there aren't any redactions. And they are complete. You see the sign out times. Why was this different? It's almost like these were scanned in the middle of the day, you know, and uh, and so their excuse to there might be other names on the on the list that we don't know that we not just the redactions, but, you know, in the blank spots and such. Who else was there? Who else signed in? You know, don't know. It's, it's unbelievable. And they won't respond to inquiries about that at all. They will right. not respond to inquiries. It's yeah, it's it's very troubling. What are they hiding here about this? Something very mysterious is going on here. Um, another big question, of course, a lot of people have is what about the children? Now we've been covering this story. We covered it at the beginning when there was reports of over a thousand children that had gone missing, that they weren't showing up for school. Uh, now it appears that, at least according to reports, no, that isn't the case at all. And that there are, according to Reuters and others, these are mainstream media publications, there are no missing children on Maui. And if you go to the government's own websites and resources, like I have, I've gone through their missing persons cases, there are no missing children related to the Lahaina fires on the government's own website uh, for missing children. Um, even So prior to the fire in August, there, of course, there are missing children. Uh, and then about a month or so after there's missing children, but totally unrelated to the fires in, in Lahaina. So 
what have you been hearing talking to local residents? Maybe can you put this story to bed for us? You've been talking to a lot of residents down in the tent city that's been set up. You've been talking to the people who've lost their homes, lost their businesses. Can you talk about the body count, the death count of individuals who we know were killed, uh, but also the missing children piece of this? Yeah, so nobody at this point that I have spoken with, literally not even one person, uh, and residents anyway, believe the death count. No, uh, it's 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 the only disaster that I've ever seen where the death count has gone down. So we should be clear. Uh, the confirmed the official the official death count now is ninety seven, but in the days after the fire, it was in the hundreds, if not thousands, right? Yeah, it was it was in the it was in the range of uh, uh, it was well over, uh, believe one hundred and fifty for a while and then it started just steadily mm. dropping and i don't know how you get confirmed uh, uh, unconfirmed deaths you know because they were confirmed and then they ended up being unconfirmed I, none right. of that makes very much sense to me uh, but you know they won't tell us anything about children like the numbers of you know you do have a lot of families that have ended up having to move off the island so part of those unaccounted for numbers with when it comes to uh, school enrollment and stuff has to do with that because the the housing crisis here has gotten so bad and the Biden administration is doing absolutely nothing to help these people at this point. It's almost like they're intentionally being choked out. They don't have a choice but to leave unless they want to be homeless with their families. Now, I, I, I do know that there were a lot more children killed than the two that have been confirmed. Now, the government hasn't given that number of two. Now, how do you know that? that have you, you, is, you, can you be specific about that? You've spoken to families who know that other children were killed. So we have two official children that have been killed as a result of the fires. That's what the government says. And you, you've heard that there are more than that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was talking to first responders that were on the scene, you know, trying to, like, right after the fire had blown through, and they saw dozens of, you know, collectively had seen dozens of, you know, entire families that were wiped out, you know, with kids wow. in the back seats of cars oh. that were just totally incinerated. Uh, and, and, you know, they're absolutely haunted by it. A lot of them are suffering from PTSD at this point from, from seeing, you know, dead children, but they've hidden the number from even the first responders. They don't even know exactly what the number is at this point. The government won't tell us. They know. They know the answer, but they won't tell us. But it's definitely more than two is what you can say for certain. It's definitely more than two. Yeah. So as to these missing children. It's dozens. Yeah, these reports seem to be off base then with these initial reports of thousands of missing children. Uh, that seems to be not accurate, correct? I mean, based on school reports and people moving off island, that number seems to be wrong, correct? Yeah, I, I, I have never seen any reason to believe that there were over a thousand missing children. I mean, you can say there were there were a hell of a lot of missing people that were unaccounted for in the days after the fire. But it, it wasn't necessarily just about children at that point. It was, uh, you know, I, I, I don't remember what the initial missing count was total overall but it was probably pretty close to a thousand. So I'm thinking that's where the number came from. Yeah, it was around a thousand or a little over a thousand. And of course, yeah, there was a lot of conflicting reports about that. So, well, that's good to hear. I mean, I think a lot of people are like, where are these thousands of children that are missing? It turns out that that's, well, according to locals, uh, that that's not true and that those children have it's, been it's, 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 it's worth noting that if there were thousands of children missing, it all it would take is one parent to come out and start screaming about it, right? In order to to you know it, to drive a hell of a lot of buzz around that. But we haven't we haven't heard that. I haven't heard anybody yeah. that has you know there are people that have you know, their children. They know that their children are are dead, uh, and that's really sad. Or they, like I said, a lot of parents perished with their children as well. Right. But no, I, I, I can't substantiate that. And I'm kind of glad that I can't. I mean, of course. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, I, I don't want that to. I, that's a that's a story. I'm happy that is not accurate. I'm I'm thrilled that we right. have an update on that part of the story. I'm not thrilled that the government is lying about the the amount of children who've died, and their official number is two. And we know from first responders and first person sources on the ground that you've spoken to that that number is much higher. So. That part of the story we can corroborate. The other part of the story we've had to, to shoot down, and I'm glad about that. I'm glad about that. And everyone watching should be glad about that. Um, before I get you out of here, Nick, can you just describe you're there on, on Lahaina. You're at a, a, a at a blocked sort of intersection where can you describe like what we're looking at behind you? So behind me right now, you're looking at, uh, you can kind of see a little bit over here. You can see the part of the wall that they put up around like I'm, I'm 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 telling you clayton this would be if our border was as secure as the wall they built around lahaina i mean it, it, illegal immigration would shut down immediately this place is a fortress it's a fortress i mean there are police at every intersection at this point wow. uh you it's know, so they're, crazy they're, to me i mean i covered to... i've covered wildfires in my career in montana uh I, you know, i've covered mm -hmm. Uh, flooding, uh, 100-year floods in West Virginia. I have never seen this level of barricades, police blockades, police standing guard around, it, uh, around a situation like this ever, ever. I mean, you've covered a lot of these things too, even in East Palestine, Ohio, where a massive chemical leak, uh, you were able to walk right up to the site there. Um, yeah, that was not, on your show. I was right there. But not so, here. Right on top of the scene. No. No, if I if I walk past the barricades, I'm going to jail. That's just, that, that's that's what they do. They, they throw you in jail. So uh, it's really, really odd. Yeah. It, it, it makes a lot of people very uncomfortable. Well, Nick Sorter, thank you so much for your amazing work out there in Lahaina. Keep it up, and we will continue to follow this story. Uh, you can follow Nick on Twitter as well, uh, or X, um, doing an amazing job out there. Thank you for bringing this to us, Nick. We appreciate it. Thank you, Clayton. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.